I've been using UV for a few weeks now. It's awesome. It combines lots of things into a single tool and it's really fast. Today, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of it and why I think you should use it. You also need to know about a few things that it doesn't do yet. And finally, did you know it wasn't always called UV? It's kind of interesting. Now, what is UV? With UV, you manage dependencies, virtual environments, Python versions, and more. It replaces lots of tools, including pip, pip tools, pipx, poetry, pyenv, virtualenv, and more. And it's also really fast, much faster than all of those other tools I just mentioned. And that's because it's developed in Rust. It's good to know that UV is owned by Astro, a VC-backed company that also develops Gruff, a formatter that's also really nice. Now, being a VC-backed company doesn't automatically mean you are evil. In fact, because it's a VC-backed company, they will probably have the means to put serious resources into developing the tool, which is nice. The counter side is that they might decide to pull a redis on us. Again, I'm not saying this will happen, just something to be aware of. All right, so how do you install UV? There are multiple ways to do it. If you're on Mac, the easiest option is to simply use brew. So just type brew install UV, and this is going to install the tool. As you can see, I also needed to update a couple of things here, so there's a bunch of other things here as well. But if you're not on a Mac or you don't have Brew installed on your Mac, you can also use a curl request and that gives you a standalone installer. And you can also install it with pip, simply writing pip install uv and that's going to install the tool for you. Or you can even install it with cargo and then supply the git repository. I won't type all the details here, but you get the idea of how this works. Now, once you have installed UV, you have the UV command line tool available to you. So if I type this, then I'm going to get a bunch of options here. So one thing that is actually nice to evaluate is the shell completion. So this generates the code for that and that you can evaluate. So once you've done this, then you can simply write UV and then for example, I type C and then you're going to get the options. In this case, that's cache and clean. So this is a nice extra thing to do. And what you can also do is add this command to your Z shell or bash.rc file. And then you get this automatically whenever you launch a new shell. And the same goes for UVX, which is the tool version of UV, similar to what pipx is to pip. In order to set up a new project, you can use the UV init command. And there's two flags that you can use dash dash app. So this is going to create a Python app with a pyproject toml file. This is the most common thing that you're going to need. But there's also dash dash lib, which will create a library. That's basically nothing more than a source caller with a bunch of Python code. So the default is app. So normally you never have to type this. And then you simply write your project name. And so now what this has done is it has initialized a project for me. So let's see what it actually generated. So this file we're just going to ignore for the time being that was already there. But you see there's now a new folder called my project. And we have a .git folder. So it already sets up a basic uh, git setup for you locally. So you can then later on attach this to a remote. There's a git ignore file, which contains a bunch of useful things like Python uh, generated files that of course we don't want to commit to our Git repository. Same for virtual environment. There's a .python version file here. So here it picked 3.12. Then there is a Python file, which is basically a placeholder that just prints hello world. We have a readme file that's empty. And there is a pyproject toml file that contains all the information for this particular project. And now what's really nice is if I go into the my project folder, so there I have my files again, and I do uv run hello.pi. This is actually going to create the virtual environment, install all the dependencies, and then it's going to run the file and we get the output right here. So that's really straightforward. Now that we have this project set up, it's actually also really easy to add dependencies. So for example, let's say I want to add pandas. I can simply write uv add pandas. And this is going to add the pandas package to my project. And it will also automatically update the pyproject file to contain that actual dependency. And if you want to install multiple dependencies, it's also really easy. So let's say I want to add uh, fast API as well as SQL alchemy. So then I simply write both of those things here. And then if I go back to my pyproject file, well, they're both there. So this is all really neat. And removing dependencies is just as simple. So let's say I don't want to use SQL Alchemy anymore. So I simply type remove SQL Alchemy. 
and then it's going to uninstall that package and remove it from the Pi project file. All really straightforward, very similar to how it works with Poetry. But as you can also see, adding and removing these dependencies is really fast. And this is not an extremely fast computer that I'm showing this on. This is an M1 iMac. So, I mean, it's not a slow computer, but still doing this is much faster than installing dependency via Poetry. But installing dependencies this way is way faster than doing it with pip, for example. Let's say I want to install SQL Alchemy using pip, like so. Then you see this actually takes quite a lot of time. Now I told you UV was called something else before, so let's take a look. This is one of the very first commits of the project. So it started development in 2023, October 2023. And as you can see, it was initially called Puffin. Puffin Rock. So at this time, this was just a package manager, nothing else, didn't do any of the other things that it's currently doing. But honestly, I think it's a good call that they changed the name from Puffin to UV. Otherwise, we would all have been typing Puffin at dependency or Puffin in my project all the time. And I don't really like that. Now, like I mentioned, UV handles dependencies for you. It also has a log file. That's what you can see here. So that's very similar to what uh, Poetry does, for example. And like I said before, these are stored in the Pi project TOML file. And like I mentioned, you can add dependencies with Puffin add. Puffin I mean, uh, UV add, obviously. You can remove them with UV remove. And if for some reason your virtual environment is not synced with the current state of the dependencies, you can also do UV sync. And this is going to sync your dependencies with what is installed in your virtual environment. And that virtual environment folder is right here inside your project. You can also explicitly create, generate the log file by calling UV log. And then there's a few other things you can do with this as well. Like you can do log upgrade package, for example, and then the package name, let's say pandas, and then it's going to try to upgrade that package to the latest version. And finally, another nice thing to have is UV3. And this is going to give you a tree of the dependencies in your particular project. So what this shows me, for example, is that I have installed FastAPI, but that relies on Pydantic, which in turn relies on Pydantic Core, etc., etc. There is also Starlet, which is the uh, lower level uh, server that FastAPI is built on. And this is a very helpful tree to see because then you know exactly what your dependencies are and how they relate to the other tools that you're using in your project. Managing dependencies is just one aspect you need to consider when you write your software. I have a free guide that teaches you the seven steps I take whenever I design a new piece of software. Grab your copy at ion.codes slash design guide. The link is also in the video description. Now back to my example here. As you can see, I have a folder, my project inside, another folder, the main folder for my recording setup. Now UV supports something called workspaces, and these are used for mono repos that contain multiple Python applications or projects. And the way that this works is if you type UV in it inside the folder, that's my project that already contains a Py project file, then it's going to assume that this project is going to be part of my project. And you can also see it mentions this, that this is now a member of a workspace. And when you look at the folder that it generated, so now there is still a Py project file here, right? That's for another project, that's exactly what we want. And of course, not a hello.pi. But then if I go into my folder, another project, and I add a dependency, let's say I want to work with SQL model in this particular project, then you can see that inside this folder, it hasn't created a log file. The log file is still right here. And this contains the reference to the SQL model package that's part of another project. So we have a shared set of dependencies. And also, if I run my other project, it says hello from another project, then it uses the same virtual environment. So the same set of dependencies virtual environment is shared between the different projects in the workspace. Now, if you don't want this, if you simply want a completely separate project with its own virtual environment, then you simply do UV in it uh, yet another project, no workspace. And now it created yet another project. I can go to that folder and let me add the dependency. Let's say SQL model again. And now you see that it created in yet another project, a new virtual environment. That's because it's not part of a workspace. 
Now note that workspaces are mainly useful if you have several projects that rely on the same dependencies. An example that Iron Codes is that we have a repository with a bunch of cloud functions for various backend automations, uh, generating invoices whenever somebody buys a course or updating the link to the latest video on YouTube and so on. And this we all put in a single repository with a separate folder for each function. And then this kind of approach is really helpful. In some cases, there are Python packages that have applications that can be run as tools. This is something that UV has support for as well. For example, if you want to run rough auto formatter, you can simply type UV tool run rough. This is also going to install the package and then run that tool. So in this case, we may want to run a check. So you can do UV tool run rough check. And then it does the check on our code. A shorter version of this is by using UVX. Like so. And then it does exactly the same thing. Now, if you have a tool like Rough, then UV will automatically install this into a temporary environment for you so that it can run the tool in there. If you want to see where those tools are installed, you simply type UV tool there, and then it's going to show you where that is. When you start using UV tool for the first time, it's helpful to do UV tool update shell. So this is going to create a configuration file for your shell, and then your terminal has the path to the executables that you install. If you want to install specific tools, you can do that also via UV. So you simply type UV tool install, and then the tool that you want to add, for example, rough. So this is already there. Similarly, you can also uninstall tools, like so. So now rough is gone. And let's install that again, because rough is actually kind of helpful to have. There we go. Next to installing and uninstalling, you can also upgrade the tool to the new version. Like so. Uh, at the moment, there's nothing to upgrade because we just installed the latest version. Another thing that UV does is that it automatically detects Python versions in your system. And then it follows a particular hierarchy to find those versions. First, it checks the managed installations by UV. Then it's going to check the system paths, so Python references that you have already added to your path. And if no compatible version is found, UV is going to download and install one for you. When searching for versions, UV will prefer newer versions first. When searching for a system Python version, UV will use the first compatible version, not the newest version. If you use UV Python list, you can see all the available Python versions and their path. So as you can see, I have like a bunch of different versions of Python installed here. I should probably clean this up at some point. If you want to install a specific Python version, you simply type puffin python install. Puffin I mean uv python install, obviously. And then you type the version. Let's say I want to install 3.12.0. And now this is going to install that particular version of Python. You can also use constraints. So uv python install. And then if you type something like this, it's going to install the newest version that adheres to this constraint. So this is, in this case, the last version of Python 3.10. And then once you have these installed, you can set a specific Python version for your project. So in this case, we've seen that the Python version was 3.12. So let's say I know that I have 3.13 here installed, so maybe I want to use that instead. So then I can simply type uv vn dash dash python 3.13.0 zero. And now my virtual environment is based on Python 3.13. Now I have some thoughts and things to be mindful of with UV. Before I talk about that, if you're enjoying this video so far, give it a like. This helps me a lot with reaching more people here on YouTube. Thank you so much. Now overall, I really like Puffin. Puffin I mean UV. It makes managing a Python project really easy. It replaces a lot of different tools and it makes it a lot quicker to get set up with Python, especially if you're new to the ecosystem. It's also flexible enough to allow you to use it in a variety of scenarios, which is great. One thing that I like in particular about UV versus Poetry is that the PyProject file is a standard file, whereas Poetry uses its own version of PyProject. Now, while UV doesn't make any of the other existing tools obsolete yet, I do think integrated tools like UV will become the standard for the Python ecosystem. And on top of that, of course, the speed is definitely a nice bonus to have. So try this yourself. Also make sure to check out the documentation because this video didn't cover everything in detail. Now the challenge 
with developing a tool like UV, it does that it doesn't become a sort of bloated kitchen sink tool, right? But still, there are a few things that I think are currently missing from the tool. First thing is custom script. For example, I'd really like to have a shorthand for calling a script like a UV test, and then that's going to run all my tests. The Node.js ecosystem has this functionality. You can add scripts to package.json, and then you can use npm to run those things. Really handy. With UV, this isn't possible, but in my opinion, this would be a really helpful feature. The second thing is related to building and publishing your Python project, which you can do with UV. To do that, you need to add a build system definition to your PyProject TOML file. If, if you don't do that, then UV is not going to do anything. And this is what that looks like. So at the time of recording this video, Hatchling is the default build backend. UV doesn't have its own. In my opinion, this would be a really nice thing to have. If UV includes its own build backend, you don't have to install another third-party tool to build your Python project. And actually, it looks like this is something that's being worked on. There's this open issue on GitHub. So if you want to keep up to date on that, follow this issue and see what is happening. And hopefully we'll get an integrated build backend developed in Rust, which will also mean that it's going to be very fast. In order to publish your Python package, you can use UV publish, and then you can pass the credentials like a password and the username, for example. Now what we use in a few projects is the trusted publisher setup from PyPI, and then we publish packages via a GitHub action. And in that case, this is really simple. You don't need to pass any credentials to UV. So here's what that looks like in Bragir, which is one of the packages that we're working on. This is a package that automatically generates captions using AI. And this is a GitHub action that we use for publishing this particular package. So there's a bunch of prerequisite work, like checking some things in PyPI, et cetera. And then we have setup and build, and there you see we have a install UV step. And then we just use a few simple UV commands to install the dependencies. We use UV build to build the source and the wheel distribution. And finally, we have the publication step, which is simply calling UV publish. And as you can see, there's no need for credentials here because that's all handled by the trusted publisher process. But now I'd like to hear from you. Do you use Puffin? Puffin. UV. Do you like it? What do you think is still missing? Let me know in the comments. Now, there's a lot more going on in the GitHub action that I just showed you. If you want to learn how we set this all up, including how to do it, if you're still using Poetry instead of UV, then this video shows you everything that you need to know. Thanks for watching and see you next time.